Well, here we are. I got a review of uh, one of these uh, kitchen knives. This is the uh, Tucson. Where is, there you go. You can kind of see them here. Uh, 509 Tonto style, even though it's reverse Tonto. But it's a little bit different than the, uh, the drop point kind of thing on it. And what I can say is that, man, this knife is gorgeous. They did a really good job with these, um, with the layered Damascus going on here. Uh, I believe they say there's 67 layers on each side, which maybe, you know, just a couple of these little tiny dots is probably one of the last layers there. Um, it's got a really, really nice ebony wood handle with, uh, you know, a mosaic pen going through there. And this top part is uh, some sort of composite. Um, it's not G10, but it is some sort of, um, you know, plastic type material. Probably what keeps it uh, at the particular balance point that they want, which is basically right at this finger curl here. Um, what I can say, uh, I haven't had a huge amount of experience with... Uh, Japanese knives thus far. Um, I really do miss the bolster because <laughs> this um, is really just not comfortable at all. It just feels like the handle comes up super quick. It's a nice, you know, 90 degree transition there. Um, and I just could not really get super comfortable with it. I almost wanted to uh, pinch up even further on it, but that negates like almost a third of the blade there so that really wasn't helping out so much that and um while this guy does feel quite sharp um the blade geometry just was working against me um now i have cut up basically uh we'll say i've basically disassembled a uh head of cabbage and that was where i had most of my trouble but I've also, you know, cut up some carrots and some uh, chicken thighs and some other stuff with it. You know, kind of put it through the ringer with uh, the few things that uh, I, you know, usually uh, cut things up with uh, outside of pineapples. Because, well, I didn't have one available at the time that I was uh, playing around with this guy. But, yeah, it just um, really wasn't cutting super great for me. And uh, because I was missing the bolster there. Um, I didn't quite feel nearly as secure in there. That and this guy is a little bit shorter than, you know, a standard eight inch chef's knife. It's more or less like a, like a seven inch Santoku or something like that. So it is a little bit shorter. So I did for a little bit because it was a large head of cabbage, um, had to, uh, grip him pretty far back, which really didn't give me a great center of uh, gravity there. So, um, I will say, I don't think this knife is for me. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I, I do like its look a little bit more than uh, most of their other um, Damascus uh, kitchen knives. It still has the, uh, the hammer marks and everything. It's got a nice belly to it so you can actually get a bit of chopping motion out there it's nowhere near as uh, severe as a, uh, a standard chef's knife but uh you know for um cutting up all your uh your herbs and stuff like that works pretty darn good for stuff like that but uh yeah uh as much as i really 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 wanted to like this knife um i just don't it's going to be one of those knives where I'm basically going to um, find someone to hand it off to or uh, sell it back onto the market because uh, it's just, you know, if you don't like a knife, no matter how amazing it might actually be, if it stays in the drawer, well, it'll stay sharp, but it really doesn't suit you for any use. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking to uh, basically uh, pack this guy back up and uh, find it a new home. I mean, obviously, I still got the factory edge on there, but yeah, it has cut something. And, well, hey, I mean, I only paid like $41 for this thing, all said and done. So, uh, you know, I'm not losing a whole bunch of money. And or if someone actually really does like this uh, style of knife, 
then great. They could probably get a hold of it for a pretty darn decent price. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on this one. This is, uh, if I can get the uh, number out here because I've had them all there. Yeah, there we go. It's the TS-509 and Tonto because they also have a, uh, a drop point version of it that's, uh, looks a little bit more traditional but is pretty much functionally the same. So, there you go. What this thing does have going for it, though, is the uh, 15CR12 MOV steel that's in here, which, yes, that's absolutely a Chinese steel. It's not, you know, Sandvik 14C28N, but it is um, kind of a little bit more of a bougie steel. It's certainly not an 8CR13, um, and heck, even the 5CR15 uh, MOV that uh, some of their other knives use is basically the equivalent of what uh, a lot of the German manufacturers have been using with that uh, what is it uh, 50XR 15MOV or something like that that, uh, that it was basically a uh, copy of um, the uh, 5CR15 so this has an interesting steel and one that I haven't really seen used in a whole bunch of other stuff uh, so I honestly don't know exactly where to compare it to, um, but that being said, this thing is virtually brand new, and I do kind of want to keep it that way for whoever this, uh, actually gets passed on to, so I won't do a cutting test on it, and for kitchen knives, I really don't think that, uh, twisted sisal rope is the way to go, because, um, you have to be an amazing hippie be able to eat um you know something with this much fiber that you require your knife for all the time <laughs> so you know i'm no uh i'm no slouch when it comes to fiber but it usually you know comes from oats and other grains and uh greens and whatnot not any of the uh the super rough stuff like that so yeah this is a really interesting knife that uh just doesn't work out for me. So I do plan on doing a couple more of these um, as I test more and more of the uh, the kitchen knives. Uh, like I did say in the last one, uh, I have covered basically all of their uh, 14C28N European slash uh, hybrid kind of uh, knives. And I love all of those. Uh, there was one that I did like a little bit more than the rest there, and the Santoku obviously was uh, quite nice, and I'm handing them off to uh, to family members. But uh, yeah, I will be doing more of these as I uh, test through them. Um, they probably won't be super interesting for a lot of folks because, uh, well, pocket knives are a heck of a lot more interesting for most of us. So uh, yeah, I certainly understand that. But for the few people who are actually curious and could stumble across it in the in the future or whatever, it's nice to actually have that information out there. So, all right. Uh, the other thing that I, I do have to say really quick before we go, it's probably more or less personal preference, but uh, with these uh, octagonal handled um, uh, handles, the... <laughs> They, um, they're not nearly as comfortable as I thought they would be. Uh, and that's not necessarily Tucson being, you know, well, they designed it wrong. That's literally, this is a traditional Japanese style handle that you see from many, many others. And just finding out that, uh, that is not exactly what I prefer. So there you go. But I do have to say that, um, they certainly give you a heck of a lot of length for the handle, so you have a lot to grab onto. But, if you're trying to chop, trying to use it like a uh, European one, you can actually um, tap your wrist and kind of prevent you from getting down there, so you'd have to uh, adjust how your wrist is. So, yeah, that's something to keep in mind, I guess, with um, Japanese uh, cutlery in general. Um, if you're more used to the European style uh guys so cool there we go there's the ts509 really wished i loved it or yeah really wished i loved it that damascus patterning is uh 
Looks quite fantastic, but it's not super comfortable for me to hold. And it was difficult to uh, disassemble some larger items. So it's not a winner in my book, but it probably is in many others. Alrighty. Well, as always, um, thanks for watching. And uh, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.